in gate or any competitive exam uh, you need not worry about finding whether the limit exists or not for most of the questions they will ask you the limit questions only when they exist so how do you find it out simple if it is a multiple choice question just look at the options in the options if they don't have anything like limit exists or limit does not exist then go for simply normal uh, application of limits and how to do that there are various techniques I'll just show you one example here and here we are going to use something called as factorization you must be already be knowing it let's see how to apply it let us say the question is like this limit x tends to 3 assume that it is x power 4 minus 81 divided by x minus 3 if you have something like this then how are you going to find out the limit let assuming that in the options we don't have uh, limit does not exist in the options let's say we have only the numbers present there then how to find it out see this if you directly substitute 3 in there it is going to be 81 minus 81 3 minus 3 which is going to be 0 by 0 it is a special form we are going to discuss about it later in the later videos uh, or here you know what it means is the value can does not exist it is indeterminate it is not defined so we just want a value so in this form if you try to apply the limit we are going to get 0 by 0 therefore we are supposed to change the form in such a way that uh, we will get some value so let's use the method called as factorization see one simple clue is whenever you are substituting 3 here it is giving you 0 whenever you substitute 3 here it is giving you 0 what does that mean it means that x minus 3 is a factor in this as well as in this it is clearly visible here but it is not visible here therefore you can use normal division you can find it out or I am directly writing it uh, I think you know that formula x a square minus b square is a minus b into a plus b I am just using that formula and writing it so it is x square minus 9 into x square plus 9 divided by x minus 3 and we know that x square minus 9 can be written as x minus 3 into x plus 3 into x square plus 9 divided by x minus 3 now we can cancel out these two right now we can substitute in place of x 3 then what do we get if I substitute in place of x 3 then we get 3 plus 3 right into 9 plus 9 6 into 18 so you can simplify it okay so that is how you can solve it so what I mean to say is from this example you need not always find out whether the limit exists or not only in the questions where it is required you apply that method which means in the options if you see that whether the limit exists or not is there in the option then you have to check it otherwise you directly substitute it in case if it is getting going 0 0 0 by 0 I am just directly putting it okay fine now let's see one more example of the same kind again I am assuming that in the options they didn't give whether uh, the limit exists at 1 or not so this is the question limit extends to 1 which means they are asking us what happens uh, for the for this function as we go towards 1 okay so this is the this is the question given now try to substitute 1 directly and see if you can if the value actually exists there or not so if you substitute 1 directly here I get 1 minus 6 plus 11 minus 6 it is nothing but 12 minus 12 which is 0 and here also 1 minus 1 which is 0 so if I directly substitute it that way I'll be getting 0 divided by 0 which is indeterminate form right so what is indeterminate form I'll discuss about it later or simply put there is no definite value there so what we wanted is in most of the applications we want a definite value but there is no definite value in such cases what are we supposed to do simple so since there is no uh, definite value only thing that you could do here is uh, convert it into some other form through which we can get the definite value in most of the cases it so happens that whenever you have the 0 by 0 form we could apply some of the techniques and we can get whatever we wanted the definite value okay so here I am going to use a technique called as factorization so why factorization is applicable here just see this when I substitute 1 here it is all becoming 0 it means that x minus 1 is a factor of this whenever you substitute 1 x equal to 1 if it is all going to be 0 
it means that x minus 1 is a factor of it why because if this entire thing is going into 0 it means that it can it can be written as something as x minus 1 into this then only when I substitute x equal to 1 this entire thing will become 0 this entire thing will become 0 right similarly here also x minus 1 is a factor of it now we know that in both of them x minus 1 is a factor right so what you can do is uh, directly try to write both of them as uh, you know product of x minus 1 and you can analyze it okay so what i mean to say is like this you can write this one as x minus 1 into something and this one also as x minus 1 into something and then you can cancel out x minus 1 and x minus 1 and later you can find out the value of it okay simply put what i'm trying to do is like this so how to find out the uh, you know x how to write this one as x minus 1 into something simple if you if you can divide it you do that if you don't know how to divide it or if you are looking for a simpler some other simpler way then simple way is you can build the entire function by using this one as a building block just observe this see i want to use x minus 1 as a building block and i want to build this entire function right so let let me build it term by term first i want to build x cube so if i use x and if i have to build x cube then i have to multiply it with x square that is the reason i'll be multiplying this with x square into x minus 1 now what will it give me x cube minus x square isn't it x cube minus x square but what do i want minus 6x square but what do i have minus x square therefore how much do i need again uh, minus 5x square therefore multiply it with minus 5x and again x minus 1 then what do i get here minus 5x square already minus x square is there therefore it is going to be minus 6x square right and what is remaining plus 5x so 5x is remaining here here i have 5x and here i have 11x now what do i need plus 6 isn't it 6x i need therefore plus 6 into x minus 1 then i get plus 5x plus 6s 6x which is nothing but 11x and then here we get minus 6 so already minus 6 is there therefore it is complete so i have written the entire function as if you know it is like this so what can i write this one as i can pull out x minus 1 isn't it i can pull out x minus 1 and i can write the remaining terms here what is remaining x square minus 5x plus 6 divided by so what what should i write here x square minus 1 i'm going to write x square minus 1 is x plus 1 into x minus 1 now we can cancel out these two now you apply limit x tends to 1 if i apply limit x tends to 1 if you just substitute 1 here then you are going to get probably 1 1 minus 5 plus 6 divided by 1 plus 1 which is nothing but 7 minus 5 2 by 2 which is 1 therefore the answer of this one is 1 so the calculation part is not important what i wanted to show you is in exam if they don't ask you about whether it exists or not don't go for that method you go for that exists or not method only if they ask you that if they don't ask you that don't unnecessarily complicate it okay so directly you can do it using this method later i'll discuss about many other methods using which you can do fine